All right, hello, hello, guys. So before we get into today's episode, I just wanted to let you know, if you haven't heard already, that this week I am doing a promotion for my signature program, the Online Summit Program. Now, specifically, I'm looking for hikers who want to get strong and pain-free so they can conquer every adventure. Now, if that sounds like you and you want to find out a little bit more about this program and see if and how it may be right for you, your goals and your situation, I would absolutely love to hear from you. Flick me a message to rowan at summitstrength.com.au with the words, tell me more. Now, from there, we can have a bit of a chat, dive into things and really just see if this is going to be the right step for you. So if you want to find out a little bit more, email me at rowan at summitstrength.com.au with the words, tell me more, and we can take it from there. Now, with that out of the way, let's talk about today's subject. And specifically, what we're going to be diving into is two really, really simple and specific workouts that a hiker can use to help improve breathing when going up hills. Now, this is definitely one of the most common issues I hear from hikers all around the world, doesn't matter what age. And they sort of of typically will say, look, Rowan, you know, I'm pretty fine on the flat. I can go and go and go. I'm pretty fine on the downhills. You know, that's not so much of an issue. But the second that I hit a steep ascent, I really struggle with my breathing. Now, at first, I start to feel like it's getting a little bit quicker and I get a little bit of shorter breath and I realize carrying a conversation gets a little bit harder. And then when I'm hiking with friends, I really, you know, try to keep it under control so they don't realize that I'm huffing and puffing away. And then it gets a little bit worse. And I literally can only get out a word or two here and there. And I'm really huffing and puffing and panning. And I'm getting red-faced. And and it's it's going to get worse and worse and worse. And this happens every single time, you know, they hit a steep uphill section. And I've been there. And it's something that I struggle with myself, you know, when I'm out of condition. And I'll tell you right now, it is not much fun. It's not my fun being in that position where you're getting uncomfortable with your breathing. It's not fun trying to mask that fact from people around you and trying to, you know, pretend like everything's all right when you're internally really, really struggling. It's not much fun getting self-conscious, feeling like Darth Vader when you're just panting up the hill. It absolutely sucks. And it makes sense that a lot of hikers want to improve this. And another thing that I often hear from hikers in this situation is they tell me, look, Rowan, I've tried so many things. I've tried and tried and tried to improve this, but it just doesn't get any better. But when we dive into things, typically it comes down to, you know, people have tried three things. They've tried doing more hiking and harder hikes. They've tried adding more walking into their week, or they might have tried a hit session here and there. And yeah, you know what? That might work for a few people, but in all honesty, You know, no matter how much hiking you're doing, if you really do struggle with this, you probably aren't going to see a dramatic difference. Sometimes you do need to get a little bit more specific. And previously on this podcast, I've talked through a number of things you can do to help. I've talked through aerobic power intervals. I've talked about respiratory um, strength uh, strength training. I've talked about a whole bunch of different things that can help with all of this. And I have gone into a little detail. But on top of all that, if you haven't listened to those things or if you have already and you want some extra ideas, today I'm going to be sharing with you two really, really simple workouts you can do to help improve this, to help improve your comfort so you feel a bit more comfortable in these situations, help improve your performance so you ultimately don't get so huffed and puffed and you can get up these hills a bit quicker and ultimately just help your enjoyment and your capabilities on the trail. Now, these two workouts, one of them is going to be done outdoors. And you can do it outdoors in a gym, but I'm going to sort of say outdoors. The other one's going to be done in a gym um, or at home if you do have access to something. So let me talk you through them. Now, the first workout I want to talk about is going to be alternating stair or hill intervals. And I'll explain what this means. So essentially what you're going to do for this particular workout is you're going to find yourself a nice long set of stairs or a nice long steep hill Or if you don't have access to either of those, maybe, you know, a set of stairs indoors, maybe a stair master in the gym, um, or maybe a really, really steep incline if you do have um, inclined treadmill, if you have access to that, or something like a Jacob's Ladder. But something that has incline and something that's going to go for a little while. So ideally, the set of stairs is going to take you more than two or three minutes to climb if you can find something like that. I know it's not always practical, but that's, you know, perfect world what we're looking for. And then essentially, you're going to set yourself up, have a little warm up. You're going to go up to this set of stairs or this hill. First time climbing, 
you're going to go as quick as you can. Now, it's not a run, but you're really, really going to push the pace and climb and climb and climb and climb. You will get huffed and puffed, and that is the intention. You'll get a little bit huffed and puffed. You'll get uncomfortable. You'll get that red face. It won't be much fun, but you'll push on through. Get to the top, whatever you need to do, and try to keep that pace all the way up to the top. Now, at the top, you probably should be huffing and puffing, not feeling super comfortable on that front. And that's fine because now you're going to slowly, slowly, slowly return down to the bottom. You're going to catch your breath, take it easy, and hopefully, you know, get to, by the time you get down to the bottom, you'll be feeling, you know, more or less under control. You won't be 100% back to normal, but you won't be absolutely heaving anymore. Then you're going to go back up again. But this time, instead of going as quick as you can, you're going to stick to a pace where you can constantly breathe through your nose. Now, this is going to be significantly slower than the first time around, and that is intentional. And essentially, you're going to go step by step by step at whatever pace you need at a pace where you can constantly breathe through your nose. Or if you do have issues with your nose and you can't typically breathe through that at a pace where you can comfortably carry a conversation or sing a song. And you might have to talk out loud to, to, to figure that out. But, um, but that's what you want. And then the second time you're going to go up, you're going to stick to this pace all the way up. So you don't get huffed and puffed. You don't get out of breath. And get to the top, you should be feeling pretty comfortable. Legs might be a little bit burny. You might feel like the heart's going a little bit quicker, but you're not heaving and huffing and puffing. Then you're going to go down, go back down to the bottom. And you repeat that again in sequence. One quick one where you get yourself huffed and puffed. And then one slow one where you stick to that nose breathing pace. And you repeat that as many times as you can, you know, depending on what sort of time frame you have available. So it might be two times on each, three times on each, four times on each, or whatever it may be. And you do that. And then every single week you repeat this, you can either add an extra repetition of each one if you have extra time, or you can do the same workout. But essentially what should happen is in the sort of time you have available, you should be able to get through a little bit extra climbing at those paces, meaning you can push the quick one quicker and you can push the slow one quicker while you're working at that nose breathing pace. So whatever you want, as long as there's some element of progression where you're just making things, adding a little bit extra in each week. And what you'll notice with this is a really, really great workout because it attacks a couple of different things. It attacks that sort of higher intensity position where it forces the body to create certain adaptations to make that position more comfortable. And it also teaches the body and yourself psychologically to be more comfortable when you are huffing and puffing and it won't feel quite as bad. And on the other side of things, it teaches the body to sort of stick to that slower pace and be a bit more efficient and teaches you sort of how to pace yourself going up and down hills. And if you repeat this for three to four, five weeks, it will make a big, big, big difference. I guarantee you to your up and downs. So that's it. Alternate between quick pace, nose breathing pace, do that a bunch of times in essence, very, very effective. So that's workout number one. And if you have access to a hill, a set of stairs, whatever it may be, that can work really, really well. Now, number two is basically one you can either do in the gym or you can do at home, depending on what you prefer. Now, in the gym, you can do this with essentially what you want to do is find a box, which you can do step ups on. So a box that's about maybe three quarters up your shins and also a stationary bike. So position them relatively close to each other. Or if you're doing this at home, you're going to find yourself a nice, either a box as well. So you can do this on a couch, a chair, whatever it may be, or again, a set of stairs. And you might have to go outdoors. You might have to do this in, in indoors or whatever it may be. And essentially what you're going to do is you're going to start, if you're in the gym, start on the bike. You're going to go really, 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 really quick for 30 seconds. So you're going to do a 30-second sprint. Really, really, really push it as quick as you can. By the end, your legs should be burning. You should be huffing and puffing. And then immediately after that 30 seconds is up, you're going to hop off, you're going to get to that box, and you're going to do step ups, going up and down, up and down for four to five minutes. But... What you want to be doing with the step ups, they don't have to be quick. They want to be steady. They want to be slow. And you want to concentrate on getting your breathing under control because you're going to be huffing and puffing after that bike. And then eventually, once it is under control, sticking to that nose breathing pace. So you'll do 30 second sprint on the bike, four to five minutes of stepping up. After that, you're going to have a rest. You have about 90 seconds, two minute rest. Have a complete recovery. Feel like you're feeling really, really fresh. And then do that again. 30 second sprint to four to five minutes stepping. And you repeat that 
four, five times, whatever it may be, um, how, the t- how much time you have available. Now, if you're doing this at home and you might not have access to a bike, you can do 30 seconds of mountain climbers. And that's close enough. You know, that'll get you huffed and puffed. You can do mountain climbers off the floor or mountain climbers off a chair if your shoulder's a bit dodgy. 30 seconds of that and then straight into box stepping again or straight into going up and down a set of stairs at that steady pace. And if you don't know what mountain climbers are, check them out on YouTube. You know, they're super simple. I'm sure someone someone's done those well. And this, again, really, really simple workout. You're getting that element of huffing and puffing getting exposure to that high intensity and getting yourself comfortable in that position, but then also teaching the body to control that, control its breathing and get you more comfortable while you're actually moving. And again, it's not exactly the same as the other workout, but it can be very, very effective. So I would say if you do struggle with huffing and puffing, if you do struggle with breathing, if you do struggle staying comfortable going up hills and say you've tried a few other bits and pieces and it hasn't really changed before, maybe give one of these workouts a go. Choose one of them. Repeat it once a week in amongst your other training, your strength training, your walking and all of that. Repeat it once a week for about four to five weeks. And then I wouldn't be surprised if you notice a pretty significant difference. They're very, very simple, but they can be very, very effective. And for hikers, they can pay off big when you're on the trail. So I hope that's given you a few ideas today, guys. I hope that's given you a little bit of insight and a couple of particular workouts that can help in this situation. And hopefully it's given you a few extra ideas that can sort of expand and broaden your horizons around training, specifically to help with, you know, uphill hiking. There's so many different ways you can go about this. There's many different ways you can get creative about this process and many different workouts will achieve a similar outcome. But those two, I've used them in the past. I quite like them and I know they can be pretty effective. And I really do hope they can help you too. Now, if you do struggle with huffing and puffing going up hills, or if you do struggle with preparing for a big hike, or if you struggle with your strength, or you deal with an ankle pain, or there's something holding you back on your adventures, and you want to make a change at the start of this year to really, really get in a strong physical position for your hiking adventures, whatever they may be, I would absolutely love to hear from you. Now, as I said at the start of this episode, this week, I am doing a promotion for my signature program, the Online Summit Program. Now, specifically, I'm looking for hikers who want to get strong and pain-free over the next 12 weeks so they can conquer every adventure. Now, if that sounds like you and you want to find out a little bit more and really just see if and how this program may be right for you, shoot me an email to rowan at summitstrength.com.au with the words, tell me more. And I'll leave that email address in the show notes below. Now, from there, we can have a bit of a chat, really dive into things, learn a bit about your story, your situation, your needs, your preferences, and ultimately just see if this program is going to be right for you and if we're going to be able to help you get where you want to be. So if you want to find out a little bit more and explore this program and see if it's right for you, shoot me an email to rowan at summitstrength.com.au and we can go from there. So thank you so much for listening today, guys. I really do hope you've enjoyed it. I hope it helps and I hope it gives you some insight. And if you have any questions off this, please do reach out. I always love to hear from you. So thank you so much for listening and we'll talk to you soon.